Now, with more complete coverage from across Southern Nevada to where you live, this is News 13 Inside Las Vegas, live at 11. I'm going to miss her more than anything in the world. It happened in an instant. A crash on the highway heading to Laughlin, and tonight that friend can't believe it happened. They were on motorcycles heading for the river run. A Las Vegas firefighter and his paramedic fiance, and then, then it happened. A head-on crash had killed both of them. I'm Ross Becker. And I'm Kathy Ray. Paramedic Brandy Cherry and her firefighter fiance, Kevin Sparks, left behind dozens of friends and family this afternoon. Now, here's exactly where it happened on US 95, right between Boulder City and Searchlight. News 13 Scott Burton is live at AMR tonight, where Brandy worked. Scott. Well, Kathy, Kevin and Brandy were set to be married on August 3rd. They were going to be a family. And this weekend for the couple was supposed to be a relaxing getaway. I talked to her last night. Um, she was excited just to get out of town, away from school. Little did Michelle and Snow, it would be the last time she would speak with her best friend. Around 2 this afternoon, Brandy and Kevin were heading south toward the river on their motorcycles when a car heading northbound on US 95 crossed the divider. It struck the couple, killing them instantly. About a, two weeks ago or a week, shopping for our, the maid of honor dress for me, and she put on the wedding gown and stood up on the little pedestal, and she was absolutely beautiful. I just wish I would have took some pictures. At AMR, where Brandy worked, the flag has been lowered to half staff. The same is true at Station 7, where Kevin worked for the city's fire department. Everybody's real somber. Uh, we started getting the calls between 2.30 and 3 o'clock, and it was shocking. Just shocking is the only word I can use to describe it, but they're fairly, they're, they're depressed. They're down. They're, they're just shocked. They don't know how to feel. I think they're, they're still sort of reacting to it, and like you said, I don't know if everybody's heard yet. Michelle never thought Brandy would be gone forever when she said goodbye to her last night. Now she's left trying to figure out how life will go on without the friends she loves so much. I have surgery on Monday and she was going to be there and just don't know what I'm going to do. Now at last check, NHP had not determined why that car veered across into the southbound lanes and struck Kevin and Brandy. As for the couple that was inside that car, they both survived. Brandy left behind a young daughter. Reporting live at AMR headquarters, I'm Scott Burton, News 13 inside Las Vegas. And tonight, another fatal accident, this one right here in the valley, and one person is dead. It happened a little more than an hour ago on the east side of town. Three cars involved this time. Investigators are at the scene right now at Eastern in Reno. That's right near Tropicana. As we said, we know one person was killed, another seriously hurt. Traffic is congested in that area, so you may want to avoid that intersection. New at 11, the sister of Slane Casino executive Ted Binion talks about the possibility of his killers getting a retrial. Lawyers for convicted killer Sandy Murphy say they found wiretaps from a different case that show others wanted to kill Ted Binion. But the DA's office says it does not feel the wiretap information is credible enough to reopen the investigation. And Ted Binion's sister, Becky, agrees. Even if they had the idea or someone had some kind of evil intention, Sandy and Rick beat them to it. I think that Sandy and Rick are doing every desperate act they can do to try to get out of jail. Rick Tambish, also convicted in Binion's death, and Murphy are now serving more than 20 years behind bars. The crimes and the punishment. That was the agenda when Catholic Cardinals met last week at the Vatican. Now many are attending the annual fundraiser for the Catholic University in Philadelphia. Tonight, Los Angeles Cardinal Roger Mahoney talked about endorsing the Pope's zero-tolerance policy. The Pope said it very clearly. He said, people need to know that there is no room in the priesthood or religious life for anyone who abuses a young person. Well, the Catholic Church is looking in the mirror these days, looking for answers to some very difficult issues involving not just parishioners, of course, but the priests as well. That's right. But the irony here is that right here in Las Vegas, the nation's fastest growing Catholic diocese, a record number of men are now considering the priesthood. News 13's Kim Sherwood begins a special series on this challenging time for the Catholic Church and Kim, kind of surprising considering the climate right now. Yeah, you might think that actually uh, considering in years past we would have none or one or maybe just two men going into the seminary at a time. It likely has to do with the effort the past few years to reach out to candidates. Yeah. 
sins of the fathers are bringing a new focus to the Catholic Church. Repeated charges of sexual abuse by priests back east and here in Las Vegas have shaken the roots of the religion. Lord have mercy. But not the faith. In spite of all the controversy within the Catholic Church right now, the Las Vegas Diocese is seeing a dramatic increase in the number of men considering the priesthood. Right now, we have nine men either in the seminary or entering school. They're coming out pretty good. 39-year-old John Asalone is among those now studying the Catholic religion here in the Las Vegas Diocese. He's found peace in his garden <laughs> and with the church. And he says despite the ongoing controversy, his interest in becoming a priest remains strong. I just didn't want to go through the rest of my life with what I called the big what if. I didn't want to, I want to answer this question. But why now at 39 years old? Asalone says he's always been nurtured by the church, but it's taken this long to live life and respond to what he believes is his calling. I truly am going up to the seminary to, to decide, is, is this really what, what God's asking me to do for the rest of my life? So I don't have an answer. I don't know if I'll come out a priest in seven years. And Asalone admits the scrutiny surrounding the Catholic Church is frustrating. Before, I feel like I'm swimming upstream at times, you know, because it's supposed to be a very exciting time for us. And it's being overshadowed by, you know, the scandals of the church. Juan Espinoza agrees. He feels the pressures of the spotlight these days. But he also realizes that charges of sexual misconduct happen every day with adults in all walks of life. It could happen to at any professional level. It also could happen at your own house, between family, between brothers and relatives. In fact, the majority of child sexual assault cases involve parents, relatives, or acquaintances. But the church is held to a higher standard. And these seminarians say they have no problem with the pressure or the stringent testing now required. And we need to find out what are we going to do to stop it and not let it, not ever let it happen again. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Now, the screening for candidates of the Catholic Church actually begins at the very first meeting they have and continues for years and years. Coming up Sunday night at 11 o'clock, I'll show you how the Catholic Church tries to make sure that future priests are stable and they can handle the vows of priesthood, which are not easy. No, they're not, and a lot of changes will be coming in oh, the yes. church. Oh, yes, especially after June, I'm sure. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kim, thank you. Well, tonight we know what led to that fatal train collision this week in Southern California. The engineer of the freight train that collided with the commuter train says the glare from the sun impaired his vision. A yellow light was warning him to slow down, but he couldn't see it. Instead, his train crashed head on into a passenger train, killing two and injuring hundreds. The engineer says by the time he tried to slow the train, it was too late. Some new info here at 11 o'clock. Uh, Hip-hop singer Lisa Lopez was the driver. She was behind the wheel when that SUV crashed, killing her. Now, this is a picture of the sport utility vehicle she and eight others were in. It flipped off, flipped rather, off a road in Honduras yesterday. She was on vacation there. The doctor says Lopez suffered a severe blow to her head and she died instantly. Investigators say speed may have pay, played a part in that crash. Lopez was just 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Well, all cancers. All of them are dangerous, but some of them grow faster and some of them are harder to treat, like this form of breast cancer, which you probably don't know anything about. Probably not. Now, most women know that a lump in the breast can be a sign of breast cancer. There are some other signs, too, but that's not always the case with this particular form. It's called inflammatory breast cancer. The health team's Heather Angel is here to show us some of these unlikely warning signs. Heather? Well, Kathy and Ross, if you had a rash on your chest, would you think it's breast cancer? It could be, and it can happen to men too. Inflammatory breast cancer is very rare. Very few people know anything about it, and even some doctors don't know about it. This lock, lack of knowledge can have some deadly consequences. The breast was always reddish and, and inflamed, and it just hurt. Angie Lamott never thought the pain in her breast could be breast cancer. Neither did her doctor. I, I specifically recall a nurse that in my general practitioner's office and she, she just outright told me, she says, cancer doesn't hurt, it's the silent killer. So it couldn't be that. And so I dismissed it also with, with what she said. You know, I says, well, it hurts, that means it's probably not cancer, you know. But it was cancer, inflammatory breast cancer, the most aggressive and advanced uh, form. Because I had a complete physical in August, and in November I was dying. 
a last resort, doctors removed Lamont's breast and gave her intense radiation and chemotherapy. That was more than 10 years ago. Take a deep breath. Her oncologist, Dr. Lord. Marianne Allison, says Lamont was lucky. The odds of surviving inflammatory breast cancer aren't life. good. Inflammatory tends to be more aggressive. Um, we can sometimes look at a 30% chance that they could be here in five years. One. Something particularly frightening about inflammatory breast cancer is that it's usually not detected with a mammogram. Instead of forming a lump, inflammatory breast cancer grows in nests or sheets. Dr. Allison says one reason inflammatory breast cancer is so deadly is that many women don't know about it and ignore the symptoms, giving the cancer a chance to spread. Some symptoms include a rash, a red or enlarged breast, persistent itching of the breast or nipple, and stabbing pain or sore. The classic description has been like an orange peel, and it's called peau d'orange, and that is something that people sometimes will confuse with infection. Dr. Allison so. says because inflammatory breast cancer is so rare, some doctors may treat a patient for an infection instead of getting her the immediate cancer treatment she needs to survive. Knowing she was dealing with more than an infection. Evelyn Rothbard the wrote the first lady a letter hoping to raise awareness about inflammatory breast cancer. I am a mother suffering along with an unbelievable situation. Her daughter is fighting a tough battle with the disease. That's what's driving me. I feel that research on inflammatory breast cancer should be included in the research that's being done on regular breast cancer. More research on this unusual disease combined with information and a vigilant attitude Lamont hopes will help more women and men survive this disease like she has. Just listen to your body. If the doctor tells you it's caffeine, don't, don't just stop there. Go see someone else. And for more information about inflammatory breast cancer, you can go to our website. It's yourinsidelasvegas.com. And Dr. Ellison says inflammatory breast cancer is very rare. In fact, only about 1 to 4 percent of breast cancer cases are actually the inflammatory breast cancer. And of those, fewer than 1 percent are in men. It's something men and women do need to be very aware of. We have to be proactive. Right. If something's wrong and we're not satisfied with the answer, get another opinion. You're exactly right. Okay. Right. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Heather. Switching gears now, uh, mm -hmm. windy day today. It Another, was windy and yeah. cooler, too. Yeah, a little um, threat of rain, do you think? Yeah, let's check. we, we got to check with Nate to find out because the weekend is here and we don't want it ruined now. Right. Do we? Oh, I certainly don't want to be responsible for ruining anyone's weekend. We did have a chance for showers that has been removed from the forecast as we keep an eye on this low-pressure system moving ever so slowly to the east. And, well, it is going to be leaving wind behind in its wake. When we get back together in a few minutes, we'll talk a lot more about the forecast for Saturday. But right now, we can tell you it is going to be a windy one with a high of 72. Southwest winds will be to 25 miles an hour. Veronica Sanchez. And drag racing without the dangers, I'm Veronica Sanchez, will bring you a live report. Now with more complete coverage, News 13 continues with Ross Becker, Kathy Ray, Nathan Tannenbaum with your complete forecast, Ron Futrell Sports, and Trisha Keen with Contact 13. This is News 13 Inside Las Vegas. Welcome back on this Friday night. You know, this happens uh, way too often. Teenagers killing themselves in speeding cars or drag racing. Just like last month, 15-year-old Julio Chavira was killed when the car he was in slammed into the back of a parked cat bus. North Las Vegas police believe he and the teenage driver were out there drag racing. But there's an effort now to curb that danger and still let the drivers get that adrenaline rush they want. Yeah, it, it's out at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway and it's something called Operation Safe Streets. News 13's Veronica Sanchez is live at Midnight Mayhem. That's what the drivers are calling it. And they get to drag without the danger. That's right, Ross, they do. It's called Operation Safe Streaks. Just got underway about an hour ago, and if you can hear it, the cars are still revving to go. Here is how it works. It works just like it does out in the streets. There are uh, There is a green light that usually signals the beginning of the race. After that, it's a heads-up first man to the finish contest. Now, the kids really seem to like it, and the adults who put this event on hope it continues that way. Uh, it was the uh, the initial intrigue and wanted to see what was going to happen. A lot of these kids, they've been waiting for that opportunity, and uh, this is the first time the, the, this racing facility has really opened up the doors and welcomed them. Now 
there are about uh, 400 drivers out here and 1,500 more people than last time uh, looking at this race. If you're wondering about accidents, well, they do happen here just like out in the streets, but here there is a certified emergency crew always on the scene just in case things get a little out of control. So far, nothing like that has happened out here. There will be more uh, midnight mayhems out here. The next one will be on the 10th of May. All you need is your ID, proof of insurance, and 10 bucks. That's what we'll get you in the race. Reporting live from the Speedway, Veronica Sanchez, News 13, inside Las Vegas. Let's take all the News 13 news vehicles out there. Oh, 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 they wouldn't yeah, get that man. far. Now we're talking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, good thing there's no water on that uh, roadway tonight. Oh, no question about that. That would certainly hinder the efforts out there. There were a couple of sprinkles around, but that's really been about it. The rain is gone. The wind is still here. Take a look outside. And how about the full moon? Yes, we shot some video oh, just earlier. Yes. And, you, you know, maybe there's a reason why people are acting strange tonight. Maybe. Like one Ross Becker right over here. <laughs> the wind is still whipping uh, close to 30 miles an hour at this hour. It is 60 degrees and humidity is a little bit high at 47%. The barometer is rising to 9.65. Can I hear a, oh, thank you. Here are your temperatures elsewhere in the neighborhoods. Henderson, you're at 65 under that howling moon. Same thing at Nellis Air Force Base. North Las Vegas, you guys are at 61. Let's see what's happening in Summerlin. Well, you're already into the upper 50s up that way and 59 right now at the National Weather Service. Now, there were a couple of hours of sleet, rain, drizzle, whatever you want to call it, up on the mountain. They're at 35 right now. Uh, the roads are not completely dry, so there could be some icing up that way. Be careful if you're headed up to the hill. It'll melt during the day tomorrow. 54 from our buddy Steve Benson over the hump in Prump 70 right now down in Laughlin. And here are the official numbers from today. Down more than 10 degrees from yesterday's high of 85. All we could muster was a 74 today, and we need to get used to that. We think the high temperatures are only going to be in the low to mid-70s through the weekend and into at least the first part of next week. Low this morning, 58. We're already close to that. We could be like into the mid-50s by the time you get up and down in the morning. Uh, Saturday sunrise is at 5.53. Air quality is mostly good. There's one moderate reading of dust. That was down in Green Valley earlier today. Meantime, the pollen counts, the olive definitely on the increase. Mulberry and ash are finally starting to die down a little bit, but that olive pollen is really tough on a lot of people. One more look at the satellite pictures. Definitely scooting on out of here, but there's rain, even a little bit of snow over northern Utah, and some of your neighbors here in the Silver State still getting a little bit wet, and even up in Lincoln County, closer to home. As we look upstream, not too much to be concerned about cloud-wise, but it is a big, windy weekend ahead, at least for the first part of the weekend. We're pretty sure that tomorrow we'll be seeing winds close to 30 miles an hour. We'll try to get rid of that stuff for you uh, by Sunday. Maybe just some leftover breezes. Here's the Nate cast for the rest of tonight. Just a few clouds around. Wind, we hope, will die down to 20 by morning. 56, maybe 55. During the day tomorrow, winds could gust to 35 miles an hour. Only 72 for the high. If it weren't for the wind, I would actually feel kind of comfortable. Let's take you up to the high country. Uh, 32 for sure. Maybe even chillier, 52 for the high tomorrow, and winds still to 35. Heading out to the lake, near 80 for your high, but boy, kind of choppy boating conditions with those strong winds. Now, the next five days, we will get, eventually get you back to 80, but it'll be a slow climb. 74 and breezy Sunday, 76 on Monday, then 77 on Tuesday. So, as we were saying earlier this evening, we want to cherish these memories yes, we before do. the heat really settle, settles in. As long in. as he stops howling. Exactly. Off. There you Thanks. go. Okay, have a good weekend. Yeah. All right, how about this one? You go out and buy new furniture, and then it's never delivered. Well, and then you finally give up. You want to return it, but you can't get your money back until you call Contact 13. Up next, Trisha Keene solves the problem. If you're getting a, a major uh, runaround, you can always call our Contact 13 hotline, right? You know, each day our volunteers take dozens of calls from those of you who need results quickly. Our staff gets involved gets answers. Contact 13's Trisha Keen shows us how your calls have been answered. Well, we never did go get new furniture. Furniture shopping is the last thing on Cheryl Jaswiak's mind these days. She wanted to replace these leather couches and actually put a $2,200 deposit down on new furniture last July. She waited for the delivery. Because of the events of September 11th, we didn't push the delivery because we were aware there was a lot going on in the whole country. But several months after that, the local furniture company kept stalling on the new furniture. So Cheryl finally asked for her money back. But the company didn't want to give her a full refund. So we knew we were going to have to go to court and decided 
Pontiac 13. Our volunteer Diva went to work immediately for Cheryl Jaswiak. All I know is it took you 24 hours to do what we couldn't do in eight months. The furniture company stalled a bit, but Cheryl has gotten her money back thanks to Contact 13. I keep saying they're my guardian angel. Uh, just, just fabulous. And if you found yourself in a similar situation, you can count on Contact 13 to help. Just give us a call on our hotline at 368-2255. Now, our hotline is open Monday through Friday from 11 to 1. If it's busy, keep trying. We do have a high call volume. For Contact 13, I'm Trisha Key, News 13, inside Las Vegas. Okay, a thriller tonight in the NBA playoffs. Ron has highlights. And Rebel Football gets set for its spring game. Sports, up next. Now, with more complete coverage, News 13 continues with Ron Futrell and the sports team. Game three for the Lakers and Blazers. By the way, a Sunday in Portland. Lakers up 2 nothing so far in the series. But betters out there will point out that the Lakers still have not covered the spread in these playoffs. That probably doesn't matter much to Shaq and Kobe, I would imagine. But one of the best games of the playoffs tonight at Seco Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Nets and Pacers, game three. This was all about three-pointers down the stretch. 34 seconds left. Pacers, Reggie Miller goes bombs away to give Indiana a one-point lead. Nets come back. Kerry Kittles. That's a three-pointer of his own with 22 seconds left to give Jersey a lead by one. So, one last chance for Reggie and the Pacers to win it. Uh, I guess not. New Jersey gets the win, 85-84. The Nets, the top seed in the East, has a 2-1 lead now in the best of five series. Big weekend for the Rebel football team. Tomorrow morning around 11 o'clock, first chance for folks to head out and watch the team scrimmage on their new practice field. It's a fun event out there. After practice, they get together, have a barbecue. It costs you five bucks, but it's usually well worth it. Let's hear John Robinson tell you what you can expect tomorrow. And, uh, we're trying to have some fun. Uh, we will, um, you know, hopefully be entertaining. Uh, um, five bucks for all the hamburgers you can eat and all the pop you can drink. Uh, I think it's a great time to bring your family out. Hopefully entertaining. Okay, time for the Las Vegas version of the X Games this weekend. Here's what the setup looks like at the Mandalay Bay Event Center. They've got vert ramps galore. They've got bands ready to rock for the event on Saturday night. Some of the best stars in the world of X Games will be here for what's called Tony Hawk's Boom Boom Huck Jam. He told us yesterday that he came up with the name. There's Tony in the black helmet there doing some routines, okay? There's going to be motorcycle jumps all on the same very big stage there at the Mandalay Bay Event Center. This will be the debut of this show when Hawk then will take it on the road after that in the fall. ESPN is going to be out there televising this event for an hour-long special to air later this summer. Boom, boom, Huck Jam at Mandalay Bay. One of the top softball players in the Valley can be found rolling him at basic high school. Right now, basics Brittany Lorenzen has a cannon for an arm and lots of power behind her swing. The senior shortstop will be taking her game to Reno next year. And by the, by the way, the Wolfpack uh, don't have a softball program yet. They're going to start it next year, and she's one of the top players in the Valley heading up there. It's nice to meet her. She says she's excited about going up there and playing some softball for the Wolfpack. Great. That's great. Yeah. All right, Ron. Thanks, and we'll be right back. Wake up weather. Oh! No. Sorry, I started that. Yeah, no. Full moon. <laughs> is that It'll be breezy, okay. yeah, something like that. It's Friday. No. Uh, kind of chilly, <laughs> mid-50s, and only the low 70s for the high, and the wind will still be blowing to 25, maybe 30 miles an hour. Good night, everybody. No. <laughs> mm. All right, that's you okay there, Nate? Everything no. Okay? Oh. <laughs> that does it for this edition of News 13 and 11. Thank you for staying with us. Have, have a great weekend. Okay. <laughs>